Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Friday, August 6th, 2021. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. And we now have a proposed opening date. Please put this in your calendar, December 15th, Wednesday, December 15th, 2021. Premier the Honorable Mark Brantley gave an update on the Nevis Pinnis Park project at his most recent press conference. Premier Brantley is the Minister of Tourism in the Nevis Island Administration. Our signature project of this administration, the park at Pinnis, it continues to progress smoothly. Construction is now at 71.8%. Landscaping is at 56.5%. And we now have a proposed opening date. Please put this in your calendar, December 15th, Wednesday, December 15th, 2021. That's the date that we hope we can unveil this incredible national initiative to the people of Nevis and the wider federation. The Ministry of Tourism is currently seeking to fill the post of manager of the recreational park. The position of the manager for this park, we have of course advertised that position and have been interviewing persons. Thus far, we have some 65 persons who have responded to this job advertisement. Two thirds of these 65 are residents of St. Kitts and Nevis. But, members of the press, you should know that we've also received applications from Trinidad and Tobago, from Barbados, Dominica, St. Vincent, Antigua, Stacia, the USVI, the USA, and from as far away as Brazil and India. The successful applicant will be shortly announced. Vacancies for other positions at the park will also be shortly announced in the upcoming months. Premier and Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Mark Brantley. A bill to validate the Land Registry Act No. 10 of 2017 and to give retroactive effect to the provisions of the Act, otherwise known as the Land Registry Validation Bill 2021, was passed in the National Assembly on Thursday, August 5th. Mover of the bill, the Honorable Vincent Byron, Attorney General and Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs, said the bill will seek to provide for the Land Registry Act to come into operation on August 9, 2021, and would also validate any action taken or done by the government prior to the coming into force of the said act. Senator Byron noted that in the past, land registration, land management, and the land transfer system were handled directly by the High Court Registry. However, all that changed in 2017 when a land registry was established in St. Kitts and Nevis. The Act modernizes and streamlines the process. The land registry, which is now separated from the High Court, works closely with the Inland Revenue Department in St. Kitts. St. Nevis, the Lands and Surveys Department, and generally the Ministries of Sustainable Development, Communications and Physical Planning. Meantime, Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, endorsed the passage of the Land Registry Act Validation Bill 2021, which successfully moved through the National Assembly on Thursday, August 5th. The bill validates the Land Registry Act No. 10 of 2017 and gives retroactive effect to the provisions of the Act, otherwise known as the Land Registry Validation Bill 2021. Minister Jeffers noted that the bill is most appropriate as it helps to eliminate some of the contentious issues that may arise with matters related to land sale and inheritance. The minister added that the staff at the land registry will also be empowered with the necessary procedures and processes, enabling them to function efficiently when performing their duties. Minister Jeffers said over time, lives and livelihoods will be improved as real estate management will facilitate increased development. Legal processes will also be expedited as attorneys can submit the necessary documents online. The Land Registry Act Validation Bill 2021 was passed unanimously in the National Assembly. Still to come. Our second place winner, winner number four, give it up for Tony, Tony, Nestle. Tony, Tony, Nestle. Tony, Tony, Nestle. The details after this break. I will take the vaccine because being vaccinated is the best way to beat the pandemic. I will take the vaccine to protect my family, citizens, 
residents, and all visitors to Nevis. I will take the vaccine to protect myself, my loved ones, my clients, my co-workers, my community. For more information or to get vaccinated, visit your nearest health center. Welcome back. Premier the Honorable Mark Brantley has expressed appreciation to several persons who recently made significant contributions to the Nevis Island administration. The Premier made the acknowledgments at his most recent press conference. Our dear friends of the Circle of Care, so my friend and sister Janet Maynard and Mr. Winston Skeet for six pallets of cleaning supplies from Canada. Harvest International, Mr. Danny Thomas and Giselle Hidalgo, SMOKH to Mr. Rene Busu and Dr. Charles McWilliams, who donated a 40-foot container of cleaning and medical supplies totaling some US $120,000 from Miami, and Mr. Freddie Paris, who kindly provided haulage for free. The donations were made to the Alexandra Hospital, the Islands Community Health Centers, the Flamboyant Nursing Home, and various other ministries and departments in the Nevis Island Administration. The Ministry of Human Resources is informing that persons are invited to apply for the United Kingdom's Chevnin Scholarship. The Chevnin Scholarship program offers students the opportunity to pursue a fully funded master's course at a UK university. The Chevnin Scholarship includes fully funded tuition fees to your chosen university, living expenses for the duration of your studies, and a return flight to the United Kingdom. Additional benefits include access to exclusive events across the United Kingdom and joining an international Chevling network. Interested persons must apply by November 2nd, 2021. Visit the website www.chevling.org to apply and to access additional information. And finally, the local news, Tony Nesbitt of Newcastle Village, Nevis, flexed her muscles and showcased her grace and beauty in the 2021 IFBB Inter-Island Bodybuilding and Fitness Championships in French St. Martin on July 31st, earning second place in the women's bikini fitness short class. Nesbitt improved from her first show in 2019, which was held in Anguilla, where she placed third. Nesbitt, who was impressive in her class, says she is pleased with her placement. In the lineup were six competitors from Dutch St. Martin, French St. Martin, Guadeloupe, and Nevis. Leah Durant of Guadeloupe placed first, while Sabate Ramos of Montserrat placed third. Nesbitt says it was difficult to prep at times due to the COVID-19 pandemic, lockdown days, and curfews. She, however, remained focused and committed. She says she will continue to learn and grow from each show experience and will not give up until she achieves her goal. She thanks God for protecting her on this journey, as well as everyone who sent well wishes and words of encouragement, especially coach David Walwyn and her family. Her sponsors included the Department of Sports, Nevis Bakery, Dr. Shivani Sharma, Penniless Autopaths, and Nelson Spring Water. The Honorable Alexis Jeffers, Dr. Glenville Library, Wally Beach Resort, the Bank of Nevis Limited, Tashara Reed, and Joseph Smith, as well as Jean Harris, Ernie Franz, Winston Perkins, Orvis and Lisa Tyson, Marcel Forbes, Cleopatra Carty, Dr. Ambrose James, Keswan Archibald, and Evan Nisbet. Tony Nisbet hopes to compete at the Giovanni Classic, an elite pro qualifier and elite pro event, on December 10th and 11th in Aruba. Her participation will depend on financial support from sponsorships. And that's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here, at the Department of Information. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.